Hey everyone, it's been a little while. I had to take a step back from audio and video content because of some upsetting events in my real life. The big one that threw off the spookier time schedule was my car being broken into. I woke up and saw that I must have left the door slightly open the night before. The seatbelt doesn't always retract all the way, so it happens when I'm exhausted. Then I noticed the passenger door and glove compartment were both open. I never opened those. Nothing was taken, but I was seriously creeped out. This happened when I would normally be shooting and editing a new episode of Spookier Times, so it just didn't happen. <laughs> Instead, you get a very special episode featuring a story I wrote inspired by this. I was in a Write an Original Story in Two Weeks contest, and this happened right before the deadline to submit. My trauma, once again, becomes your entertainment. Enjoy. Locked by Robert J. Gannon. By the third time my car door was open in the morning, I realized this probably wasn't my fault. My memory isn't the greatest. It suffers when I'm stressed or tired. I have left the car door cracked or even wide open before when I'm in a bad way, so I don't always give it much thought. But three times in a row? I didn't leave the house yesterday. I walked outside to close the car door and didn't leave again until this morning. Nothing was missing. The door was open. No change was taken from the console. No paperwork from the glove compartment or supplies from my travel teaching days. It was just the door. I live alone. It's easier that way. When I leave things where they belong, I can't forget where they are. Other people tend to move things when they think they can help. Being alone is supposed to stop things from moving. Sometimes I forget to put my wallet in just the right place, or knock over my meds, or put the milk on the wrong shelf in the fridge. That has to be on me. I don't remember too well when I'm stressed. The car door was something different. Even with medication and meditation, those little voices in my head telling me why the world will end if I don't check the locks are working three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times in a row are still there. The system works until it doesn't, and when it doesn't, I get stressed. When I'm stressed, my memory gets worse, and then things are bad. I drank my usual three cups of coffee to balance out the meds and cautiously drove to the electronics store. Setting up security cameras can't be too hard. I deal with the stress from the unplanned purchase later. I had to know what was happening to the car. $500 wasn't much to feel safe in my own home. The stress was already wrecking me. I left my cars at the register and my phone on the shelf. The beep of my car unlocking stopped me from wandering the parking lot for a long time trying to remember where I parked. The cameras would remember what I did for me. I started working in the driveway right away. The drill was on the third drawer on the right side of the toolbox in the tool shed, and the battery was on the fourth charger on the wall. I remember using the other three in the past year, so this would last the longest. The bits were in the right drawer, but on the wrong side, so I grabbed the whole thing and left it on the trunk of the car. The light would help me find everything I needed. I had five points to hit to cover every possible angle on the driveway. The camera on the shed didn't need to be too high, so I drilled it in at shoulder height and snapped the camera in place. I still had a post near the top of the driveway from the scarecrow I left up until last Christmas, so I used that to cover the top-down view with the second camera. I needed the ladder for the rest, which should have been hanging on the garden shed by its fourth rung. The ladder was hanging on more of an angle than I liked. I'd have to remember to add another bracket in to keep everything level. What if the ladder fell and landed on a child who ran into my backyard to chase after a ball? I'd be a murderer and never have control over my life again. I scribbled a reminder down on my arm with the permanent markers I left in the clay pot on the second shelf in the back of the garden shed and carried the ladder to the car. The other three cameras would create a triangle to cover my yard, the car, and the back door. 
that was every possible angle on the car itself. Nothing could approach without my noticing. The whole system was solar powered and motion detected, so no one could get anywhere near the car without being seen. Everything recorded through an app, and the system was armed by scanning the QR code on each camera with my phone. The coffee started to wear off, so I made the choice to leave everything and lie down. I drew a quick map on the back of my hand of the displaced tools and tossed the pen into the trunk with my class supplies. I needed a new blue marker for that kit anyway. Camera one, focus. A blue car sits in the driveway. The windshield is cracked in the upper left corner. A faded red house is directly behind. Another camera stares at me. No motion detected. Power off. Camera two, focus. A faded red house is to the right. Several shingles are missing. Lights are on inside. The driveway pitches down to a blue car. Tools are scattered all over the trunk. The bumper has a large dent. A drill bit is stuck under the right rear tire. No motion detected. Power off. Camera three, focus. An A-frame ladder leans against a faded red house. The screen door is torn. A blue car sits in the driveway. Both right side doors are closed. No motion detected. Power off. Camera four, focus. The door to a wooden shed is open. Another camera stares at me. A blue car sits in the driveway. Tools are scattered all over the trunk. No motion detected. Power off. Camera five, focus. The door to a wooden shed is open. An A-frame ladder leans against a faded red house. A blue car sits in the driveway. Both left side doors are closed. No motion detected. Power off. I woke up several hours later with the blue ink all over my hand. I don't remember why. My phone flashed with a notification. Apparently my bank balance dropped low enough to alert me. What charge went through? Did I leave my card somewhere? I brewed a fresh pot of coffee and tried to relax. What had I done before the nap? I knew I was tired from going out, but where? I took a sip. The warmth of the cup grounded me. I finished the first cup and looked at my arm. Bracket. Carrot colon colon O oh, line dash line dash line O oh, carrot colon colon. Right. I needed to fix the ladder brackets on the garden shed. That post I left in the front yard from the scarecrow would be perfect to chop down as a new wider bracket for the fourth rung of the ladder. I went out the front door and there was a camera on the post. That's right. The car door was open again this morning. I guess I installed some new cameras. That felt right. It had to be. No one else could have done this. I walked down the driveway where my tools were all over the yard. Why was that whole drawer on my car? The drawer belonged in the tool chest on the right side of the tool shed where I always left it. I slid all the bits and accessories into their slots in the drawer so I couldn't lose any more. I left the one bit in the drill, but the battery had to go back on the charger. I had to carry everything back to the tool shed. The drawer slid in fine, but the chargers weren't right. I straightened them to be parallel with the shelf by length, not width. That felt right. I rotated the batteries through just in case any charger wasn't working and tapped the new order. Two, one, four, three. Two, one, four, three. Two, one, four, three. The next battery was two, not one, not four, not three. The battery had to be swapped so I had enough charge to fix the ladder. I pulled some scrap wood out of the bin behind the tool shed that was close enough to the right size for a new bracket and went to the garden shed. I screwed the wood into the wall at just the right height and dropped the drill on the ground. That way I would remember to put it away after hanging the ladder. The ladder was still leaning against the back of the house. That's not good. What would someone think if they saw that ladder standing there? Am I trying to make enemies? Not that I want anyone else at the house, but I didn't want the neighborhood to hate me for being unsafe. 
my focus was starting to leave again. I went back to the kitchen to finish the pot of coffee. I couldn't lay down again, not until bedtime. Each sip helped form a better plan for the day. I scrubbed at the blue ink on my arm while counting down the tasks. One, move the ladder. Two, test the cameras. Three, check the car. Four, lock myself in the house. I've done enough today. There was no need to leave again. I went outside and walked the ladder to the ground. I knew the right way. It wasn't worth fighting that system. Not today. I tilted the ladder onto one foot, grabbed the fifth rung, and walked it down to the ground. I carried it to the garden shed, letting the foot drag through the well-worn groove along the side of the house so I didn't hurt my back moving the ladder. If I hurt my back carrying the ladder, I couldn't work. If I couldn't go to work, I couldn't earn money. If I couldn't earn money, I'd lose my house, and then hanging the ladder would be the least of my worries. The ladder slid on a new bracket system well enough for now. I reached inside the garden shed to grab another marker. I wrote REVISE on the new bracket and drew a circle on my arm to remind me of that note later. What was next? I decided to check the cameras from inside the house and lock down for the night. That made sense. This was a simple process. I had three doors to the house, the basement, the kitchen, in the front. Each had two deadbolts and a chain. Deadbolt, deadbolt, chain lock. Twist the knob to make sure there isn't any give, then move on to the next. Deadbolt, deadbolt, chain lock, twist and move. Deadbolt, deadbolt, chain lock, twist and relax. I needed to check them all again to make sure I didn't forget a step. If I forgot a step, someone would break in. If someone broke in, I would be destroyed. Unlock and lock, unlock and lock, unchain and chain twist. Unlock and lock, unlock and lock, unchain and chain twist. Unlock and lock, unlock and lock, unchain and chain twist. It only made sense to check the basement again since the car was right outside. Nothing moved. I pulled out my phone and checked the app. One camera, then two, three, four, five came into focus. I could see everything around the car. One of the drill bits was stuck under the tire. I'd have to remember to grab it before I drove again. I could also see the ladder hanging on the angle even with the new bracket. Not good. Something would happen if I didn't fix it. I left my phone and unlocked the locks. There was no sense leaving one door open when I'd have to check all three again. Front door, kitchen, basement. Always in that order so I remember to do them all. I tested my pocket for my keys and wallet one, two, three, four times to make sure it was safe to leave the house and went to the garden shed. I took the ladder down and grabbed the drill. Good thing I left it right by the door to make sure the ladder was hung properly. One, two, three brackets unscrewed from the wall. I had a T-square hanging to the left of the washing machine in case I ever needed it for class, and a whole bin of chalk for marking cuts on the shelf to the left of the furnace. Second shelf from the bottom, not the top. I went into the basement and shut the door. That's why I noticed my car. The door was open. Did I open it? I couldn't remember. I had to check the cameras. They would know. Camera one. Motion detected. Record in three, two, one. A blue car sits in the driveway. The windshield is cracked in the upper left corner. A faded red house is directly behind. Another camera stares at me. The left front car door is open. No motion detected. Power off. Camera two. Motion detected. Record in three, two, one. A faded red house is to the right. Several shingles are missing. Lights are on inside. The driveway pitches down to a blue car. The bumper has a large dent. A drill bit is stuck under the right rear tire. The left front car door is open. No motion detected. Power off. Camera three. No motion detected. Camera four. No motion detected. Camera five. The door to a wooden shed is open. An A-frame ladder hangs from the side of a red shed. A blue car sits in the driveway. The left front car door is open. No motion detected. Power off. I ran outside and looked around. No one was there. There was silence. No bird had chirped. No wind had rattled the leaves in the trees. 
but the door was open just as it was this morning. That I remembered. I always remembered what was wrong. This was wrong. I had to make it right. I opened the door all the way, but I couldn't see anything jammed in the mechanism. Nothing stopped the door from sealing, either. I closed the door and opened it two, three, four times. That felt right. I checked the other doors. Using them did nothing to that front door. I searched under the car. Nothing was trapped underneath except that stupid drill bit. I grabbed it and threw it at the yard. At least I could drive away if I really had to. I didn't want to think what could happen if I got a flat tire on top of everything else. I, I dragged the ladder off the garden shed and opened it by the car. Nothing was on top, either. Has the windshield always been cracked? No time for that now. I had to fix the door problem. There had to be a logical explanation for this. I slammed all my weight into the car. The door didn't budge. I did it again to the front, the right, the back, and the left one. More time. Nothing. I turned away and counted down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nothing. The door was closed. Maybe that fixed it. I opened and closed it one more time to be sure, slamming it shut so hard the car shook. I'd be lucky to open it again after that. I'd crawl through the passenger side from now on if it meant the door staying closed. I was done for the day. I had to lie down. I walked back in the house and started locking the doors. Basement, then kitchen, then front. Deadbolt, deadbolt, chain lock. One by one until the job was done. It wasn't even worth testing them again. Apparently I couldn't close doors anymore. If the car door could open, so could everything else. I woke up to a flashing light on my phone. Who would call me? I, I wasn't expecting any messages either. I unlocked the phone and checked the volume switch. Off, on, off, on, off. There was a new app on the screen. A camera. The cameras. Something was on the cameras. I caught it. Finally. Camera one. Motion detected. Record in three, two, one. A car sits in the driveway. The windshield is cracked in the upper left corner. An A-frame ladder is leaning against the car. The light of another camera stares at me. The left front car door is open. No motion detected. Power off. Camera two. Motion detected. Record in three. Two, one. The driveway pitches down to a car. An A-frame ladder is leaning against the car. The left front car door is open. No motion detected. Power off. Camera three. No motion detected. Camera four. No motion detected. Camera five. The door to a wooden shed is open. A car sits in the driveway. An A-frame ladder is leaning against the car. The left front car door is open. No motion detected. Power off. I knew it had to be my fault. The car door was open four days in a row. I had to have done something wrong. I just couldn't remember. The End